just imagine hundreds of Grand Canyons, but instead of brown and tan rock, it's all blue and white ice. We just got back from Greenland for a project we're calling the Greenland Connection. Our flooding tides, our rising sea levels are all connected to what's happening in places that may be beyond our borders. We need to look at what forces are at play in other parts of the world that are making it rain so hard, that are making flooding almost a common occurrence here. One of our stories that we did a few years back was about how the Gulf Stream is slowing. A lot of the ice in Greenland is melting and that's sending a big slug of fresh water into these ocean currents that, that drive the Gulf Stream. So we kept on hearing about Greenland in the course of our reporting and it became clear that we needed to uh, study that uh, country more closely. Greenland is, has so much ice that it actually has gravitational pull like a mini moon. And it pulls the ocean, just like the moon pulls the ocean, toward it. And that raises the sea level near Greenland but it actually lowers our sea level. It pulls the water away from our coast. Now what happens is when that ice melts, that gravity in that ice disperses. And so that gravitational pull decreases. And that means the oceans sort of slosh back and raising our sea levels. While you're there, you just hear this constant thunder. But it's not actually thunder. It's the ice breaking off and into the water. Imagine an an iceberg the size of an aircraft carrier doing a somersault. There were so many just gigantic icebergs moving, floating, floating by. You could actually see them. And then to hear the, hear the ice crack and it, and it sound like thunder. One thing that I really wanted to show in my images is how big these pieces of ice are. It is so vast. Going and seeing rivers of meltwater up there and lakes of blue water. It was beautiful, but it's also a reminder that this place is melting. I hope our readers get a sense of how urgent the situation is, that the forces affecting us are huge. Why go all the way to Greenland? Couldn't we do it in an easier way by making phone calls or, or uh, just sending emails? Well. If you do that, you really don't get a sense of the place. You really can't talk about it in an honest and authentic way. You have to go out there. You have to go look at the icebergs. You have to put your feet on top of the ice sheet to really get a sense as to what's really happening. We were able to do this trip in part because of generous support by the Pulitzer Center and the Fund for Investigative Journalism. But more and more, our stories are really directly supported by readers through their digital subscriptions. So, if you subscribe to our paper, you are more than ever directly supporting this kind of investigative reporting. When somebody opens up the newspaper on Sunday morning when the story comes out, I hope that they look at the photographs, read the story, and I hope that they feel connected to a place that maybe they never knew they had a connection to.